A lot of the agents, when you talk to them, they have never built a recurring income stream or residual income stream. They're focused transactionally. Their mindset's focused on get the next transaction, get the next check, and move on. Whereas most investors are focused on let me build a foundation, let me build off of it today, next year, and the year going forward. And eventually that foundation's gonna be big enough I can live off and I'll be financially free. So investors think residual residual income. And then also it's so much more difficult to build a rental portfolio or an owner finance note portfolio than it is ref share. Like dramatically uh, way, way more difficult. So when they compare the two and they come in, this is at least was my experience. And I started building rest share. It's felt much easier. So I put a lot more time into it. And, it. and I think a lot of investors do the same, which is why you see a lot of them have big teams. On top of that, most investor companies, uh, whether the wholesaling house housing companies, they usually have a small team of agents that work inside that company on, on staff that is kind of separate from them. And they usually they don't do much with it. But when they find out they can partner with the XP, a lot of times they have a license that's sitting idle or they just have to turn it on or something like this. And then they can bring that team under, underneath them. What you'll realize is because investors can set their percentages, they can also buy and sell and put a commission in front of them on both sides. They cap and hit icon stats uh, pretty easily and quickly. And so I was going to those types of events down there, IRA, IRA and money raising events. I was going to uh, just traditional wholesaling, house flipping and land hoarding events. But what I was also doing was I was getting inside uh, investment Facebook groups and, and uh, different groups and being active. I was responding on people's posts. I was looking for any investors that were saying they recently are getting licensed or they just got licensed or should they get licensed or anybody that would come up with a question in those groups. Hey, does it make sense for an investor to get licensed? And then I'm reaching out to them saying, Hey, I got licensed. Here's what I did. Let me show you what I'm doing with my business. And then I kind of start conversations that way. National events. These are good ones to go to go into these networking events, guys. And what I want you to think about is recruiting in a way that's not boring, bland, and annoying, right? Think of it as just normal life and going out there and meeting people and developing relationships with people. So I have brought in numerous people from events like this, where like one of them, I told you we were on a cruise and I recruited two of my partners that both have over 200 agents now in the same cruise, same event, I recruit two people. One was on a, out of a hot tub on the cruise and one was at a, at a, a pool where everybody was at just kind of hanging out at like a pool bar. So I'm pointing this out because I think sometimes agents think that they have to be like, I have to call someone, set up an appointment call and go through this rigid process. This is about building relationships and having fun at these events. Don't try to overwhelm people. Just be likable, build that relationship, go to the afternight functions, go meet people where people are having fun and having fun conversations. Don't try to recruit someone sitting in, in like the, uh, you know, they're sitting next to you in a chair during the event find the appropriate times, but who goes to these events are the people that are investing money in their career. They have bigger goals. They're way more intentful on their business, especially if they're flying across the country. Um, so that you can have people that have way less time building their skill sets, but Tom Ferry, click funnels events, Sirhan events, they've spent millions of dollars, some of them on these events to get this audience out there. So if they spent millions, how much do you have to spend? thousands, right? Maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars to get to one of these events. So find the ones that you need to get as far as skill set that, that you're trying to get to it already. So for example, say there's like an AI uh, event coming up or something like that. Find something that you are already seeing the value in the event already, but then go in with a strategy and how you're going to use that event for referral business, but also how you're going to use it for agent attraction. But uh, we've had a lot of success bringing in some really big brokers and team leaders and influencers from certain partners in our group at these types of events. Influencer marketing, will they get their license? So if someone has 100,000 followers, it doesn't matter if they're selling a shoe, a hat, a sandwich, they're going to be able to sell it because there's enough people inside that audience. They're going to have demand for whatever product or service if there's 100,000 uh, people, right? So who do you know? So some of our biggest partners, that we, I mean, for example, you know, when I came in, I had a fairly large YouTube channel by the investing space. I was convinced showing the numbers and people following up with me that this would make sense. So I actually got my license. We've had other big influencers that are not even in real estate decide to get a license. Okay. So who do you know that has a big business in a different area? Are they in insurance? Are they, you know, in fitness space? Were they an ex athlete? So think about, we're going to have here coming out soon, the sports entertainment division. This is a great opportunity to reach out to these influencers because they're all looking for a way to build an extra income stream, but they don't want to have to build it.